Let's go over the best moments of Open at Austin final round, and more importantly, what this win means for Gannon Burr and his lawsuit. Even though the real question is who has the better country swing, Gannon or Paige? Sorry, I'm a little hung up on it still, but why did Paige get a fist bump and Gannon get a high five? I'll never know these answers, but I desperately need to know. All right, so right off the bat, it was looking like Eagle had a chance to take it home, but ultimately had four OB throws and just did not finish on the back nine. But with that said, he still had some amazing putts, and it looks like he's definitely still back in true Eagle form. Simon was looking like he was going to take it home. He had so much momentum going for him. He had a little bit of a slow start, but I really thought he had a chance to take it. But ultimately having two bogeys in the foul round, which is not enough to get it done, but ultimately he finishes second place with two strokes behind. Then we have Calvin, who was looking very, very strong. He was making all of his putts, looking like the most confident putter we've ever seen once again, and I love to see this consistent pass pattern that he is not being timid in final rounds. He is really going for it. But in the same manner as Simon, he had two bad holes. He gets two doubles, puts him out of contention, loses by three strokes. And then definitely the emerging player here, we have Cole Rodallin, who really showed up, did not ultimately finish, actually had a pretty poor uh, back nine, but really, really showed up, had some amazing putts. I had so much confidence in him and his overall play right now. I am so excited to see how he does. Probably going to take home a silver series if I had to say, because he just has a lot of confidence and unique shot shaping that you need to be an elite player. And some of these insane putts and his crazy upshots really prove that he is here to stay. Also, I'm pretty sure this is the third tournament in a row that he's been in like the top 10 on the final round. So it is definitely not an anomaly. And ultimately, there weren't that many compelling storylines for FPO. We had Paige totally destroying. We had Kristen kind of falling apart for the first time ever, marking her first fall from podium finish in at least a year, and then Missy continuing to crush every single circle two putt, but ultimately just not finishing. And then lastly, he knew it was coming. He had social momentum built up around this entire year so far. He's had a lot of eyes on him, obviously, Gannon Burr. Honestly, I didn't even see him finishing up on the podium, but he showed up like no other. I don't actually know all of his shots because I'm pretty sure it wasn't even on coverage all that much, but he definitely showed up. He was on chase card and in a weird scenario, he was actually finishing on 18 and he had a decent amount of strokes on lead card. So after he finished his putt, everyone kind of knew that he was the winner. And having that weird sensation of the winner being on chase card was certainly surreal. And it was such a different feeling from Waco. You had some real stakes that you thought maybe Adam might take it home. But this was just pretty black and white. Gannon had the lead and he was the winner. And looking at his upshot at 18, I think it's pretty clear that he has such extreme confidence, trust in his disc, that he's just going to be a mainstay no matter what happens. So obviously it's very interesting that he has two wins already and he is about to sign most likely Asterix with Dismania. So I wonder what that's going to look like. Will he have a trial period where he is trying out Dismania discs during the season? I don't ultimately know. There might be a situation where he signs with Dismania, but doesn't actually like but doesn't actually play with the disc to like 2024. I'm not fully sure, but it's just so funny that the player that has a lawsuit against his sponsor and mentions poor quality of discs still has such confidence and trust in him that he can get a win on tour. And obviously, I don't think these claims are fictitious like Prodigy claims. I've actually had these same issues with Prodigy, but it is just a hilarious happen stance that Gannon's able to take it down with probably the most heated sponsor anyone's ever had in disc golf. But now that Prodigy has allowed Gannon to sign with any company, it will be very interesting how this new company will promote Gannon, how they'll publicize Gannon as a, a tournament winner for the 2023 season, or if they just kind of like push that under the rug and just promote Gannon by just showing his amazing shots. I, I don't ultimately know, but knowing Dismania, I'm sure they'll have some very unique marketing of Gannon, and I'm very interested to see how that all plays out. And I will happily be the first one to buy a Gannon Burr run of DD3s. It will be awesome. So with that, what do you guys think? There's obviously a lot going on in the disc golf scene. So thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe. Wild Runs signing out. Peace.